Трое молодых американских туристов прилетели в окружную столицу на личном самолете. Среди них Мэтью Гат Миллер. We got nine minutes to get in the air to make it there. Lena Peak, so we're gonna have to go to Richard Peak for just a short while, but that's okay. No radio, but in the 367 Hotel Pomp. Bearing taxiing at 28 and request an IFR to uniform a hotel Mike Alpha. We have information kilo. Let's go uh, here. Okay, here, take this. Controls are free and correct. Instruments are good. That's, that's all good. You're bu everybody's buckled. Everybody's yeah. got their gear on. No radio, but in the 367 Hotel Pomp. Departing from way 28, no. Prudential 5 Hotel Papa, I'll call you off at the Anchor Center, have a safe flight, and uh, a good time. Southern Bob, thanks so much, take care. Anchor Center, Manhattan 367 Hotel Papa, 1,700, climbing 10,000. 367 Hotel Papa, Anchor Center, Roger. Okay, so we got full fuel, we got all of our survival gear. We're heading out over the Bering Sea, we've got our EAPIS file, we've got a Russian permit, we've got our survival gear, we've got a life raft back there, we all know how to use everything. And basically now we're heading off over towards Russia. Uh, huge shout out to Garmin, by the way, they gave us the databases uh, for this trip. So that's cool. They just added this new worldwide obstacle database. So you don't have to have like separate databases for different places. Uh, one interesting kind of fun fact about this is that because there's so many airports in the world, so there are actually two separate databases so for nav data. So there's an international database and there's an, an America's database. So we've got the America's one on this one, we've got the international one on this one, so we can get sort of to the border with this one and then we navigate from there with that one. Out here, the weather information is so limited. Like even when I just now, when I went out to the flight service station to ask, you know, if I could get a, a briefing of sorts, uh, they were like, well, you know, we don't really have much information for Russia and everything else is pretty limited anyway. But I was like, yeah, just, just give me whatever you got. And they did, and they were fantastic. Okay, so far everything's looking good. We got about uh, an hour until we get to the international date line and the border with Russia. Looking good. I see that ETA just passing six or uh, six o'clock local. Got some white caps on the water down there, so it is a little rough today. But I think as we, I think we're gonna find as we get further offshore, actually, it's gonna be a little calmer. Oh, we also Russia. we also brought some Alaskan beer and a nice big growler, so that if we are there right before closing time. They're still happy to see us. Hopefully, hopefully it's good and everything. Then as a seven hotel pop, a radar service terminated. Report Valda to Edmonton on a correction of Magadan control or Anadir. Anadir might be closed, so you can try to reach out on 131.0. Okay, we'll try 131.0 at Valda, seven hotel pop. It's interesting that the uh, frequency he gave us isn't listed on, on any of the uh, JEP stuff. 33-0 is what they give here. We're going to Anadir, Russia. It's basically the, lo it's the uh, closest uh, like fully incorporated town in Russia uh, to Alaska. So it's about 400 miles west of Nome. 
The problem today was that, you know, this morning we just couldn't tell that icing wasn't going to be an issue and uh, the, the freezing level was going to be high enough that we could get below any potential icing that we might encounter. So, you know, from the time that we, you know, thought it was looking good to having all the weather to say, like, yeah, we can definitely go try this safely, and then having all the paperwork in order, filing flight plan, all, you know, just all of that kind of stuff with that internet connection, that took a couple hours. So by then, uh, you know, we just, we were kind of on the clock to get there before the airport actually closed if we were going to do this today. And we wanted to do it today if possible because the weather looks great tomorrow and we don't really know beyond that. So we know that at least this way we can get back tomorrow, not be trapped in Russia for a week or something. So far it's looking good. This is more like the uh, Pyrep that was about 80 miles uh, southwest of here with a low layer negative ice. I'm going to go ahead and try to download the uh, weather here with the Connect from Garmin. Go ahead here, we'll say, we got time to download this, so we'll get the whole flight plan, 500 miles on every side, request data. That'll take a couple minutes to download all that, because that's just a lot. We don't have to, we could request a smaller amount if we wanted to get it faster, but we'll just get everything. So we have as much information, because we got to, it'll take about a, about a minute to download or so, maybe a minute and a half. They're not showing anything on the infrared satellite here which is mostly higher stuff. So uh, I think we're probably are gonna be good because you know, I, I would think if it's higher than, you know, much higher than we're at now, it would be showing up on here. And there's a high rev down there from uh, a couple hours ago, two and a half hours ago, Beach 1900. Ported in skies, overcast 700, tops 2000. Turbulence negative, icing negative. We don't have much more out here. Let's see, this airport that we're gonna fly over, the latest report is Overcast 800, uh, mountains obscured, light drizzle and mist. So that's pretty much you know what we're expecting everywhere. And over here in Anadir, same thing. Uh, showers in the vicinity, scattered 5300 cumulonimbus. And of course, the uh, wind here is in meters per second. But yeah, so this should be all good. I could go for some Oreos. Flight attendant? Yes. Could I get some Oreos? No. Just kidding. Gotta stay nourished on these long flights. You're still running Lena Peak? That'll give us 63 gallons when we land. That gives us enough to fly back, fly to an alternate, and hold for an hour. Magadan, November 367, Hotel Tampa on 131.0. Okay, we're going back to the board. Yeah, Magadan, November 367, Hotel Tampa, Valda at 0312, Zulu, maintaining flight level 100. Abina, 0321, Bravo Charlie, next, over. Okay, we'll report Abina for 7 Hotel Papa. Okay, our estimate for Abina is 0321 Zulu. We're maintaining flight level 100. Bravo Charlie next for Bonanza 7 Hotel Papa. And we just gave that report to someone on 131.0, but uh, 330 here is uh, a lot better for us. We can hear that. Number 367 Hotel Papa Road, uh, remain this frequency and you advise. Uh, report passing Abina. Okay, we'll report Abina 7 Hotel Papa. Thank you. So we should have just tried our frequency before the one that Center gave us anyway. Right. Okay, so now we're on. Hecto Pascal's there, so we're on standard altimeter 1013. I think they're speaking Russian. Sounds like it. So the wind is out of the south at 15 knots. This is nice that the uh, GTN 750 actually converts it from meters per second to knots. Because the uh, METAR is actually 170 at 8 meters per second which is apparently 15 knots. Visibility is unlimited, showers in the vicinity.
scattered cumulonimbus at 5,300 feet, temperature 16, dew point 8, altimeter 2977, but they give it as a 1008 hectopascals, I guess. So that's so confusing, because apparently they give you the altimeter setting in millimeters, but the METAR is in hectopascals, which they'll give you on request, and then you know, this converts it to inches of mercury for us if we want but we can just set it directly in hectopascals. So we could download that, could have that data, you know, being downloaded automatically every 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever we want. But I like to just do it manually when I need it. November 367, Hotel Papa. November 367, Hotel Papa, go ahead. November 367, Hotel Papa, report to make it down at So yeah, the weather still looks pretty good though. I think we're gonna make it. Yay! We have this one in the bag. Was that for us? I don't know. Or was that for November 367 Hotel Papa? That's correct, sir. Confirm you have hot position, Bravo Charlie. Uh, November 7, Hotel Pampa, that's affirmative. We got a call from uh, someone on 131.0 on and uh, she just requested that we report um, Boomal next. But yeah, we did cross Bravo Charlie at 0339er and we're estimating Boomal at 0504. Bonanza, November 367, Hotel Pampa. So we currently have seven hours of fuel remaining. Wow. Now we've been flying for what? We got into the oh, air just under two at zero one five five so yeah about yeah, two hours two. that's crazy nine hours yeah that's wow. a bonanza for you gotta love them the one really nice thing about this panel all around is that it just makes hopping in the plane to go to russia or egypt or greenland or europe or where caribbean or wherever you want to go really easy just hop in and go but yes we've been in the air for about two hours and ten minutes and we got about an hour and 20 minutes to go we're going to be basically just right planned three hours and 30 minutes, and it's going to be basically exactly three hours and 30 minutes. We've got information x-ray. Expect the NBB runway 19er approach. Transition level is flight level 80. Transition altitude is 7,675 feet. QNH 1008 hectopascals. QFE 1001 hectopascals. I don't know. You seeing this, Owen? Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. I don't know. I have no idea what to explain of it. I mean, I mean, actually, it does look kind of like a, yeah, you know, sort of like a little front or something. Uh, maybe it's just junk in the water or ice. Maybe it could be ice. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, because it looks. Go a little further. It, it could be ice, kind of along that line like that. I guess maybe it's ice, and the wind just sort of blows it into a line like that. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of what it looks like. Interesting. And I should be a scientist. And a deer approach, November 367, Hotel Papa position. November 367, Hotel Papa, another approach, a good day. Identified. We think as well, 100. Report on ready for descent. Expect Bomo uh, for arrival. Okay, we'll maintain flight level 100, we'll advise ready for descent. We have information x ray, and uh, we'll expect the uh, Bomo for arrival. Approach November 367 Hotel Papa, request descent. November 367 Hotel Papa, descend to height 1500 meters to uniform T3. To uniform X-ray? X-ray. 1500 meters, is that? I'm guessing for right now that that's 5100. Uh, okay, somebody do the conversion for me. 4,920 feet, so that's the height, and we're going to fly the, uh, we can just do that, so the QFE was 1001, we'll change to that out of flight level 70. I'll tell him we have the airport and request the visual, but I don't think he's going to give it to us. And November 367 Hotel Pampa has the airport in sight to request a visual approach. November 367 Hotel Pampa, visual approach. Expect visual approach, November 367, Hotel Papa. November 367, Hotel Papa, be informed, near threshold, taxiway 4, 
Okay, near uh, taxiway 4, there's a disabled aircraft, uh, 700 tail top, copy. Wow, I didn't even catch that wow, one. Oh yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah, because well, I can see it here. You see it right off the approach end, uh, to the right, there's oh, an yeah. aircraft in the grass. Where's the airport? Just off, just under the left wing, hold on. What, what was that? Cleared visual something. Uh, say again for 7 Hotel Papa. November 367, Hotel Papa, clear visual approach. Cleared visual approach, November 367, Hotel Papa. So it's just behind the left wing, so I we'll see follow it. kind of the same pattern that they want you to fly for the uh, ILS. Fuel transfer pumps are off, gears three green, we got one notch of flaps in, and only kind of a descending right hand pattern here. It's beautiful out here. It is. This is awesome. Well, number 327 Hotel Papa, contact another tower, 124.0, bye. Tower 124.0, decimal zero, November 367 Hotel Papa, thank you, good day. Anadir Tower, November 367 Hotel Papa, visual runway 19er. November 367 Hotel Papa, another approach, uh, runway 19er, clear to land. Runway 19er, cleared to land, November 367 Hotel Papa. Okay, so we're clear to land, we got three green, we're on the fullest tank, we've got plenty of gas to get back, and we're here 33 minutes before the airport closes. We have some rain off the right, but right here, everything's looking pretty great. Looks like a little pipeline out here, and a disabled airplane off the right here. We're right in the last notch of flaps, we're going to land a little long because it doesn't look like there's anything for us over here anyhow. The fire truck and everything. I wonder if this did this happen today or recently. Getting a little gusty. November Hotel Papa, taxi to the end of the runway, vacate to the left via taxiway Foxtrot. Left turn, taxiway Foxtrot. 367 Hotel Papa. I assume this is Taxiway Foxtrot. I didn't actually see a sign. I'm guessing that the people in colorful vests are our welcoming party. November Hotel Papa, follow Marshall instructions. 7 Hotel Papa, we'll go. We have our passport? Yep. Um, okay. You're taking pictures and stuff. I don't know if that's good or bad. Okay. Are we okay to get out? Hi there. Hello. Uh, documents. Sure. Camera, video camera. Sure. I, I, I think that one's probably stopped, but if it's not, I can stop it real quick. I just have to... Yeah, can I, can I go... He told us we needed $500 cash to get to the hotel. And all of a sudden it's like a thousand bucks to get to the hotel and back. We drive down to this beach and there's a boat there that they drive onto. We get in the boat, our taxi driver gets out. These two other guys get in and we start off across the water. And at that point I was saying like, if I was gonna rob somebody and like throw them into the ocean, this is exactly how I would do it and in Russia. We never saw our taxi driver again. We never again. saw our taxi driver we again. Taxi Some other guy got in and, and took us to the hotel where they don't have Wi-Fi. They don't speak English, which is just fine. We don't speak Russian. We don't speak Russian. Right. So here's the situation. Why are you whispering? I don't want somebody to hear something that we're talking about and then like cause us something else again. Okay. There were some police officers outside who said we could not leave the hotel and that if we did, we would, quote, be taken. So instead we're back in the room watching Russian television and um, apparently we've kind of like talked to our Russia guy and he has assured us that he's taking care of it and there will be no issues, we can do whatever we want, but uh, a little bit freaked out. So. We're just gonna stay here for tonight, and apparently in the morning the, the media wants to do something or something, so that's probably a good sign. It means they aren't gonna do anything to us. And uh, yeah, then we'll 
hopefully go explore a little bit before we head back to Nome. You must tell the truth. Nobody seemed to know what was going on, but we were sure we would have no problems. And about that time, the police the police car left, so we left. figured that was fine. But we, at that point, we were too spooked to go outside anyway. It was pretty late, too. We got up the next morning, and the police car was back. So we got breakfast, we went back to the room. We can't get a hold of our Russia contact. We get a knock at the door. And it's this lovely interpreter, Hana. And we need to go to immigration, uh, an immigration office with her. And so they tell us that we entered the Chukotka Autonomous Region illegally because it is a closed border region. So even though we have visas valid to enter Russia, we need special permission to enter that region of Russia. Here uh, it is said that you have rights to, uh, to get some copies, get some uh, photos, mm -hmm. and so and so on, but uh, this law. Yeah, so we signed all this paperwork that says we admit that we broke this immigration law. But we didn't know that about we, it. Be, because we didn't know about it. You know, there wasn't any assurance in there that that was all the penalty was. You know, for all we knew, maybe we were signing that away and then, you know, they take that as evidence to, you know, in, right. inflict some much harsher penalty. Like, well, what are we going to do about it? We want to leave in a couple hours to go home. Right. You know, none of the pilots that we've talked to that have done this exact same thing, gone into the city like this, ever had this problem before. One thing was is that our Russia contact last night mentioned something when we said, you know, the police were going to take us, that the worst they could do is fine us $30. So I took that to mean that he knew this was a possibility, but that it usually has just never been a problem. And so they don't bother with it or something, but, you know, kind of knew about it. And we Googled it later, and it looks like it's a real thing, just that no one told us about it. Uh, none of the people who were supposed to tell us that told us about it. Okay, so we got the uh, immigration issues sorted, and we're hanging out with the uh, translator, Anna, and uh, journalist here, Igor. And now we're going to go grab a bite to eat. But we did get to do a little walking around, see the yeah, sights. We did get to see it a little bit. She knew the taxi drivers, uh, they were the same guys from uh, last night, so we felt a lot better about that then. I will say it was really sketchy getting the taxi across the water. They had oh, a lot of man. trouble getting it onto the barge. I thought we were going to like tip over and roll the thing you know, into the barge in the yeah. water. Uh, finally got it on, and then the seas were just really choppy, so we we're bouncing all over the place. The water spraying up, and uh, I thought we were going to roll off that thing and that into the water. Crazy. But uh, it worked, and they were really nice. They came checked on us at one point because the driver had gotten out when we got on the barge. He came back, he's like, you know, all okay. Yep, I'm glad we did it. Me I too. wish we'd have known, uh, you know, been told about this special permission in, in advance and figured out how to get that if possible. You know, so it was an extremely stressful 24 hours, and uh, it's going to be so fantastic to land back in the United States here. And at your tower, November 367, Hotel Papa, request start. November Hotel Papa, negative. One hang up when we got to the airport is that the handler was like, well, there's no flight plan. I was like, well, how do we file a flight plan? Because in every other situation I've been in, in like 30 other countries, the handler is the one that helps you file the flight plan. They know right. how to file the flight plan. He's like, well, no, usually our other Russian contact who we hadn't been able to get a hold of yet today handles that. November 367, Hotel Papa, and the end of the tower, you are clear to Nom, Bumu 1, departure, flight level 110. So we start, we called Nome Flight Service and we're like, hey, I know you guys can file a flight plan from Nome to Russia, but can you file one from Russia to Nome? And they're like, well, we don't really know, but maybe we'll try. So they tried. That was great. Finally, our Russia contact messaged us too, so I don't know who actually got that one filed, but we got a flight plan filed, went through immigration. November Hotel Papa, taxi to Holding Point, runway 01 via taxiway Foxtrot. Holding Point, runway 01 via taxiway Foxtrot, November 367, Hotel Papa. Okay, you guys ready to go? Yes. Controls are free and correct. November Hotel Papa, clear for the call for runway 01, after departure contact and approach, 120, Clear for takeoff runway 1 on departure. Where's the hand? Uh, 120, decimal 0, November 367, Hotel Papa. I'll do a quick run up here. Okay. But yeah, we definitely have a tailwind. Yeah. It's a quartering right tailwind.
got it. Good enough. Okay, let's get the gear up. Everything is looking good. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, we go over to departure. And it's your departure, November 367, Hotel Pampa 500, climbing flight level 110. November 367, Hotel Pampa, the approach. Uh, good evening. Uh, no radar contact via Bumo 1 departure, climb to flight level 110. And just identify. Okay, we're identified. Climb to flight level 110 on the Bumo 1 departure, November 367, Hotel Pampa. I have never wanted to get out of an airport more than this one in my entire life. Okay, so that was, we thought this was going to be an adventure. I didn't think it was going to be quite this much of an adventure. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. Right now we're just going to focus on getting the hell out of here. It's technically Anadir over there on that side of the water, even though the Anadir airport is over here. And uh, so this is some little village here. And apparently it turns out that if you cross the water to get into Anadir, you need special permission to enter that territory or something, uh, which no one told us about, so we had a little immigration snafu. Well, I think now we can sit back and relax. Oh my gosh. Dude, we did it, man. We did it, but... Oh. Absolutely insane. I mean, honestly, there's nothing I want more than a half rack of ribs, a pulled pork sandwich, some mac and cheese, and a root beer. I love that, Owen. Oh my gosh. I want to go to Disneyland. I want to see my puppy. Next time, next time we decide to go on an adventure. <laughs> I don't want to go to Russia. I just want to go to Disneyland. I'm so happy to be in the air. We still do have like two hours until we're out of their airspace. Okay. But I think I think we're okay. See, I was thinking like, oh, flying to Russia, that's not, it's not like we're going to North Korea or something. Right. But you know, I, I don't know that like from a bureaucratic perspective, it was a whole lot different other than that it's not quite as strict, you know? Right. But uh, they weren't gonna like imprison us and kill us or something. No, but I think they were they very- certainly, They certainly, they were very nice, but it was just, you know. They were fair, there was just a lot of uncertainty, I guess. Like, right. okay, what's gonna happen next? Why is there a cop sitting outside our room? Why are they? You know, I just I felt like I couldn't read any of them. Like I didn't right. know, like the guys at the airport when they were and there's like, you know, there's three of us and there's like 15 of them. But for whatever reason, it was a problem for us and not for anybody else. But as a result, it made it a very very stressful 24 hours. It was a very interesting city. The people that we met uh, were extremely helpful, very friendly. Like they were just awesome. But the whole bureaucracy just made it very very difficult and right. very very stressful. We just never knew what was happening next or you know really what was happening now we spent most of our time in Anadir either sitting afraid in our hotel rooms or um, trying to work our way through this whole immigration law issue and you know sign these papers and go to the bank to pay our fines I'm just like so relieved I can't even relax yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm still just so on edge, like... Because I was going to say, I think that this was the first time I've broken the law. Yeah, so we now are all... <laughs> we all probably have a criminal record in Russia. Right. Aww. It's the international date line. So, I mean, another fun fact, we took off at, like, what, 4.45 p.m. on July 2nd. Then we're going to land at 11.50 p.m. on July 1st. Going back in time, 20 hours. It looks like... They're calling that negative 38 to negative 55 Celsius, so um, that's uh, relatively high cold clouds. It looks like we are getting a little bit of ice on the window. Yeah. Temperature's still Okay, we got warm. some on the wing, too. Here we go. We're in the clear for now. Yeah, but not for long. We'll see. We'll give it a minute until we, like, need to, until it's, like, clear that there's more adhering. Right. What do you think, Matt? Um, so the problem here is that their minimum altitude is 10,000, flight level 100. The uh, minimum terrain altitude is 53,000, or 5,300 feet uh, on this route, but I don't know that they're gonna give us anything lower than 10. I'm gonna request it, see if they'll give it to us. I think That's starting to melt off there, though. I think we're good for now. If it gets worse, yeah, it's melting off on the wing. We're not in no icing conditions. We got ice, but at this point, it's not at all clear that we're continuing to get any ice. 
So this would be an example of getting ice where the total air temperature is greater than zero. Yep. But it's unusual, but you know, the droplets are big enough that they're hitting and rolling back. So right. uh, the leading edge of the wing, the temperature is positive too, and there's no way you're going to get ice right on that leading edge. And you can even see it over here, where it's like the leading edge is actually clear, and the ice forms just a little bit above that. So it's like it hits and it rolls right. back, and then it freezes there, where the temperature is closer to static. The temperature's increased, it's now yeah. negative one Celsius, total air temperatures kind of between two and three. So I'm gonna get yeah, it looks like even the, the wings melting a little bit more too. Yeah, I'm with you. The FAA says that above a total air temperature of two, uh, you don't need to worry about it as much. Anchorage Center November three six seven Hotel Papa. November 36, Papa, Anchorage Center, good evening, radar contact 124 miles west of the Nome DOR. Uh, November 367, Hotel Papa, that checks for maintaining uh, flight level 110, do you want us on an altimeter? November 367, Hotel Papa, I have no altimeter at 3005. 3005, we'll maintain 111,000, but have the 367, Hotel Papa. Okay, let's get the latest weather. Winds are basically looking as expected. And uh, they're calling it 2.5 miles, overcast 500, 3005, temperature 1 1. This and will be fun. Yeah. Center Bonanza 7 Hotel Popper, request direct SPIVI for the uh, straight in RNAV 10 at right? NOPE. November 367 Hotel Popper, clear to the NOM airport via direct SPIVI, SPIVI transition. And uh, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain 5,000. Discretion of 5,000, direct SPIVY, uh, SPIVY transition, Seven Hotel Papa. Number 367 Hotel Papa, did you have the 0708 special or more current weather for Nome? Uh, 7 Hotel Papa, negative. November 367 Hotel Papa, the Nome 0708 automated special, wind 130 at 1-6, visibility 1 and 3 quarters. Light rain, mist, ceiling 400 overcast, temperature 11, 2.11, altimeter 3005. 700 Del Papa, copy all of that, thank you. Yeah, so it was a good call doing the RNAV. November 367 yeah. Hotel Papa, you're welcome. Um, also, runway 321 is closed. Uh, runway 1028, frost leaves on the south edge. And there is bird and, bird activity and musk oxen near the airport there at Nome. Seven o'clock, thank you. It's raining pretty good. Yeah. This is going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah. And he's hand flying, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. No autopilot today. I kind of prefer hand flying when it's down to the deck anyway. I don't trust yeah. the autopilot. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, visibility is one and one quarter. We need one mile for this. And, uh,. That last step down fix is a little ways out there, so we're probably going to end up doing a little bit of dive and drive on this. You know, we're going to get down to our MDA and stay there until we see the runway, or until we, you know, get to the runway, which is the missed approach fix, at which point we go straight ahead to 3000, hold at Emo. Then we'll try not to hit any birds or musk oxen. November 367, Hotel Papa, maintain at or above 4000 until Spivey. Cleared our Neverlay 10 approach to the Nome Airport. Change to advisory frequency approved over Spivey. Report, report down with me this frequency, please. Okay, next is Huffboo at 26. Yep. Now we cross Spivey, so we go to 26. Yep. So at the turn early, not necessarily the descent. Also, I think the airport's not going to be in this database, so we're not going to see it on the synthetic vision. Gotcha. Nome traffic, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pond, about a 10 mile final on the uh, RNAV runway 10. Nope. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the gear down. And one notch and flaps, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Boyak at 2400, then we go to 960, and then 340. We're just a little high, but we're coming down kind of fast. Now you're doing great. Stable. 
got my eyes out. I am going to put the prop up to like 2400 though. We're on the fullest tank, the left one. And the runway's going to be off the left when we do find it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're inside Boyac, we can go down to 960. And Nope traffic, been in 7 Hotel Pumps, about a uh, 6 mile final, runway 10 Norm. Look good. And the electric trim is not working. Okay, so we go to 960 here, and then in a half a mile, we can go down to 340. 60, 1, Perfect. Okay, I set this to 3 for the mist, and we go down to 340. We're just slightly left, of course, but the runway is also going to be off our left. Okay, correcting that, and the wind just shifted quite a bit there. Starting to see the ground. Yep, I'll call the airport. Okay, we got another uh, 260 feet to go. I got it. Airport Continue. Side. Go full flaps. Very nicely done. Holy cow. That was right 10 minutes. Minimums. Minimums. I think at all this, the runway is kind of bent up on the south side, so I'm going to use the right side of the like touchdown markers as the center line. <laughs> I have no words. Oh We're home. We're back in the U.S. Oh my gosh. Nope, sweet, no. So no, nope, sweet, no. <laughs> a Bonanza 367 Hotel Pop is on the ground and no, nope, can't fly far. Remember 367 Hotel Pop, a red here. I start cancellation receipts. Good night. Good night. We are back in America.